This ghost is a fire. Holy flame burning wild. Burning through the night. Burning with the light of a billion stars. This love is like light. Cracking through the sky. is inside. What if that is true? What would that mean for us? What if there's a God who set all of this into motion? What if he's powerful enough to give to us the galaxies and worthy enough to receive all of our devotion? What if everything he promised comes to fruition like when he told Abraham he would become a great nation and did or like when he told Moses he would lead a great rescue mission and amid great oppression, God revealed to us a great lesson. He, he keeps his word. All the stories are true. What if that is true? What if when we say the creator entered his creation, we are referencing history? What if when Jesus said you're healed, he meant it? What if when Jesus spoke forgiveness, people were actually forgiven? What if when Jesus told demons to flee, they really had to leave? What if Jesus healed lepers? What if Jesus calmed storms? What if he walked on water? And what if for Jesus, miracles are the norm? And what if Jesus, who lived a perfect, miraculous life, didn't just come to live, but what if he came to die? What if his death has the power to cover us, every sin, every guilt, every shame? What if he was gracious enough to pay our price? But what if the story didn't end when he died? What if before he took his last breath, he let out a final sigh? What if he cried, it is finished? But what if he wasn't finished? What if he rose again and this same Jesus is still alive? Because over and over again, Jesus left the crowds thinking to themselves, wow, and if he's still alive, couldn't he do it again now? If, if this is true, these stories wouldn't have to stop. In fact, maybe the edge couldn't be stopped. If this is true, get ready. His power, his spirit, his presence would cause St. Louis to look more like heaven. St. Louis, get ready for light to break forth into darkness, for hope to rise up over despair, for grace to cover our mistakes and for love to step into this hate. Get ready for students in our schools to be added to the house, for heaven to touch down on earth, for a group of students who live by his word and for our hallways to experience a brand new birth. Get ready, Edge, for Hillsboro to be changed, 
for Rockwood Summit to be reached, for Oakville to see and for Seckman who will believe, get ready for a simple message that causes students who are tired to experience peace, for the cross to be boldly preached and for the Savior to be clearly seen. Get ready for our God to do more than we could ever imagine, for a revival by and for the name above all names, for our expectations to be blown out of the water. Get ready to never be the same. Get ready to partake in the greatest rescue mission of all time, to play a part in the greatest story ever told, to give your whole life, your whole life, to actively watch this story unfold. Get ready because Jesus is here. Jesus is alive, His promises never fail. And He says, I will build my church and even the gates of hell will not prevail. Edge, get ready to experience the power of God's love because we believe that Jesus is saying, ready or not, here I come. We're ready for your fight to fall.
Welcome back, Edge. I mean, it's 2019. We're finally here. Make some noise if you're just excited to be back. Because I'm just glad that it didn't snow again and cancel the Edge, because that would have been a huge bummer. And it didn't, because we're here right now. And my name's Tony, for those of you that don't know me. And I just have a few announcements for you guys tonight. Um, first off, if you're new, welcome. Um, this is The Edge. We're excited that you were able to join us tonight, and we can't wait to meet you. So uh, head out. Uh, here after service and go to our connect desk and you'll be able to uh, get a free t-shirt. We'll just get your Instagram handle and we want to follow you back. We want to know what's going on in your life. We want to meet you. So go ahead and head there after the service. And uh, we also updated our student pages. So if you have a phone with you, you can pull it out right now and you can follow us on social media um, at OBCC underscore students. And that's for our Instagram and same for our Twitter. And then our, our Edge text group now is up to 700 people. So that's amazing that we are sending out uh, 700 text messages every time that you get that text to your phone, that's going to 699 other people and let them know that we're having an edge or what's going on. So you can text the number 89800, text edge to that number, and you'll get a weekly update about what's going on up here in our student ministry. Uh, and up next, um, if and just because we're not meeting here on Sundays, because you guys know we're about to jump into the new structure of small groups, uh, which in two weeks from now, we're going to have a parent meeting in here because the edge was pushed off so long. Um, next week, we're off again because of Super Bowl. But in two weeks, we're back on. I mean, we have an edge tonight, and then we have an edge in two weeks from now. And in two weeks from now, we're going to be talking about love, sex, and dating. And it's going to be awesome. But parents, we invite you to come up for a parent meeting afterwards during our after party. And you guys are going to hear all about uh, the schedule for the month. So I just have... Uh, one more announcement, and then we're going to go right back into worship. So um, if you are, just because we don't meet here on Sunday, students, I want to challenge especially the seniors and juniors, the two front rows. Pastor Tom said it himself today. We're going to save those for our student ministry this Sunday and every Sunday that we don't have an edge. So it's a challenge that we want to show uh, the generation behind us that we're engaged, that we're plugged in, that we care what's going on, and that we have a love for Jesus Christ. So we're going to have the t front two rows dedicated to our student section uh, when we don't have an edge. So we invite you guys to sit up front, show some passion, show the, the generation behind us that we love Jesus just like they do. So um, with that said, I'm going to say a quick prayer. We're going to go right back into worship. Father, just thank you that we're back on tonight. Thank you um, that we get to have fun and we get to glorify you through worship and that we get to meet uh, and just have fun not only on Sundays but outside of church in our schools um, because we're ready like that video showed, Lord. We are ready for what you're going to do all across St. Louis and Jeffco, and all the areas surrounding, Lord, we're ready for what you're going to do through us in our school. So I just pray for the students in here, um, Father, that they feel encouraged, they feel equipped, and they feel ready to go for 2019. Because tonight we're going to be talking about a new us, Lord, a new year and a new us. So we just pray that 
we put our identity in you this year and that we don't become so focused on ourselves, but that we can look to you and we can just worship you over the next 10 or so minutes. We love you and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
before we dive in, we're just going to go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight, um, for the opportunity to be with you, to be with these students. Um, we love you and are grateful for those songs and for the fact that we aren't just singing catchy melodies and lyrics, but these are truth straight from your word. Um, and so God, I pray that tonight uh, we can just contemplate some of those truths and really where we're at. We can maybe reevaluate where our faith is diving into 2019 um, to where we can be more and more effective um, for the sake of the world around us and our schools and our sports teams and clubs and uh, wherever you have called us really to occupy in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, we trust you and uh, we believe in you and we're excited to hear from you in the next few minutes and it's in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, well, my name is Josh Noblet. Um, if you're here for the first time, I'm one of the pastors here, and I have been helping out with the Edge for a long time, which is uh, super fun. And I feel like it's been forever uh, since we've been here. I really do, which is kind of a bummer because the Edge is a lot of fun, and um, I've had to minimize about six tabs uh, trying to figure out where I'm at here, friends. Um, where are we? Let's see here. There it is. Um, so yeah, it's been a while and like a really long time. Um, so we're sorry about, I guess a couple weeks ago, maybe we could have had the edge. Um, but we've kind of always said that our, our motto here and kind of the uh, protocols, if there's snow on the ground or if there's a threat of dangerous roads, we would rather err on the side of caution with students out driving. And then last week, where did that come from? I didn't know snow was even a possibility. And I was coaching a basketball game at four and I came outside and the roads were absolutely covered and we had no choice. But we're here now, which is, uh, which is exciting. And uh, we're looking forward to a, uh, to a really great semester. And like I said, we haven't been with each other for a while. So I just want to catch up a little bit. How many of you guys had a good Christmas? Literally, we haven't been together since... Uh, since Christmas. Uh, raise your hand if you got some, some cool, like, new stuff, some cool gifts, new, new, new stuff. What, name your favorite new gift. <laughs> headphones? Nice. What kind of headphones? Beats. Nice. Beats by Dre. Um, let's see. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So we got some good, what'd you get, man? Nice. That's awesome. Uh, I see a hand in the back. Let's keep, this is going. This is fun. What's up? What do you get? Nintendo Switch, nice. Anybody else up here? Favorite? Yeah, come on, let's hear it. Went to Disney World. What a great Christmas gift. Did you? Get, all right, all right. Did you go with your family? Huh? Nice. That's awesome. That's a. Uh, that's great. Well, honestly, I got some. Um, I got some gifts. I got. Some, I got this shirt right here, actually. Um, so I like. Yeah, thanks. It's a great shirt. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. Um, goodness gracious. Uh, I got some gift cards to Golf Galaxy, which is super excited. Yeah, I'm fired up. Get a new golf club. There's some energy in the room, man. We haven't been here in a while. Um, this is fun. So yeah, so I'm excited to get a new golf club uh, once my birthday comes around and I get more gift cards to golf, to golf Galaxy because golf clubs are expensive. But there's something about new, right? Like we like new. So that's why I really love the new year. Uh, any New Year's resolutions in the room? Um, any New Year's resolutions? Let's hear it. Don't miss a day at the edge. Oh my goodness. You're a hero. Let's hear from somebody else. Let's hear from somebody else. You've already gone. Let's, where, where, yeah, let's hear. Any, any New Year's resolutions? Anybody? You hosted. You, my man, should be up here. Shake my hand. What's your name? Caden. Uh, Caden? Yeah. I was at the uh, talent show for Oakville, and he hosted it, and he is a phenomenal. He is very good on stage. So, um, yeah, man, maybe this will be you one day. Um, so yeah, so New Year's resolutions. My New Year's, my New Year's resolutions are: I want to lose five pounds and keep it off. Um, so that is that's the goal. I want to work out. All right, enough of the clapping. You guys are amazing, but enough of it. I really kind of want to punch you guys in the face at this point. All right, so stay cool. Um, seriously, this that's not worth an applause. Um, I, I, I want to uh, I want to read 30 books, and I'm actually on track. I'm in the middle of my third book, uh, in the middle of my third book right now. Uh, 
All right, um, I'm gonna stop this whole bit. Um, we'll just skip forward to the next part of the talk. Um, uh, but maybe you're in the room and seriously, I'm skipping the whole section. I'm dead serious. Um, but uh, so we're, we're kind of moving forward and maybe you're in here and you're like, I'm not big into New Year's resolutions, okay? Like, is anybody in the room you're just not big into New Year's resolutions, you don't do it? Okay, yeah, you guys are rebels, awesome, it's great. Uh, I used to be that way, but I have a feeling that deep down when a new year comes along, you might set at least a goal. Let's not call it a new year's resolution, but a goal. Or if, if nothing else, you think, I just hope 2019 is better than 2018. Like, I just wanna have a better year in 2019 than I did in 2018. And I think that's all great. Essentially, when a new year comes along, like this is kind of how it is for me, I get excited. There are new dreams, there are new aspirations, there are new goals, there's kind of a breath of fresh air and in a sense, we think, man, this new year, this new year can kind of give me a chance to be like a new me, you know, like new year, new you. And, and it's not like there's like some magic potion to the fact that it's a new year and like we're just going to be zapped because all of a sudden it's 2019 and 2018. But I do think there's something pretty cool about how we can all kind of refocus and think, who do we want to be? Like, how do we wanna grow? How do we wanna become more and more the people that God has created us to be? Essentially, I think this idea of New Year's resolutions and a new year, I think it points to a desire that maybe all of us have, whether in, we're in middle school or in high school, and that is a desire to change, a desire to grow, a desire to get better. Essentially, it's a desire to become new. To, to become new on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that was really just gonna be the talk. And that was pretty much all written out last Friday, um, word for word. We had five, six pages done. And, uh, and then I kind of felt a nudge from God to go a different direction. And normally when I feel a nudge, I try and follow it. And so, so I kind of rewrote the talk, but I do wanna recap what we were going to say um, a couple weeks ago before we got snowed out. I don't even know when we were supposed to meet, but the first edge we were supposed to have that first week, this is really what we were gonna say. I was gonna say, if you're in the room and you're not a Jesus follower, which maybe that's, maybe that's the reality for someone in the room today. Like you're here, you're like, I'm not a Christian. And that's okay, you're welcome here. We're excited that you're here. This is a time just to kind of think about all of it and hopefully maybe take a step closer um, to realizing who God is and how much he loves you. But if you're not a Jesus follower in the room, maybe you're here because whether you know it or not, there's this desire for something that you're just maybe missing. Like something just feels off. Like there's this whole issue of like, you doing things that you know you probably shouldn't do, but yet you can't really seem to shake it. And you're like, I, you know, like there's just, there's something wrong with us as human beings. You know it, like I say this, I do these things, I struggle with this, I know I shouldn't do it. And I just can't seem to really get a grasp on that. Like there's just something missing. And I, I really don't think you're gonna find it until you're made new, until you're reconnected with the one who makes us new. Like, like, Jesus didn't just, like, Jesus, you, you weren't just made by Jesus. I believe that you were made for Jesus. And until you live your life for Jesus, I think that something is going to be missing. I think something is going to be off. And what's cool about, like, you know, the power of God and the good news of Jesus, like, we could change that tonight. Like, like you could be made new tonight, like, Positionally, you could go from being separated from God to now being reunited with your heavenly father. You could, you could go from being an orphan alienated from God to now being adopted as God's son or daughter. You could go from being blind to now having sight spiritually. You could go from being dead spiritually to being alive spiritually in a moment, in an instant of belief in Jesus. We think it could happen right now, in a moment. We think Jesus loves you that much where all you gotta do is believe. Say, I believe it, and you could be made new. Well, I was gonna share the verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I actually think we uh, have it for the screen that says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. That's a good scripture in a moment, in an instant. For those of us who are Jesus followers, everything 
changed. In fact, everything that Jesus offers to you came into your life in a moment, in an instant. But, but then we were going to kind of keep talking about the idea of being made new, and we were going to talk about how if you're a Jesus follower, maybe there's still this thing that just doesn't seem right. Like it seems like something's okay. In fact, you still desire to be made new. You still desire to be changed. Maybe your relationship with Jesus is stagnant. You haven't grown in a while. Maybe we haven't had an edge in a while and you haven't been disciplined enough to come to church on Sundays and you've been disconnected from God. And you're like, I just desire to grow and to become more like Christ. I just need to be made new. I need to become new. And if that's you, that's good. I'm glad that's a desire that you have. Like if you're not growing and that's not a desire, maybe that should be a red flag. Do I really believe all this stuff? Like there's no version of Christianity. This is what we're gonna talk. There's no version of Christianity where the Christian stays the same. In scripture, we don't see that in the New Testament. Like the version of Christianity is that we're getting better. We're growing. We're becoming more loving and more compassionate and more passionate about the things of God more frustrated with sin and what, it, and what it does to our world. Like, we have a desire to grow and we have a desire to be made new. But then part three was gonna remind us that, that this doesn't just happen overnight. And, and I think this is the problem with New Year's resolutions. This doesn't even have to be spiritual. It's just the reality. We don't like the process. We just wanna be zapped. That's really what comes down to New Year's resolutions. This is what I just wanna happen. You know, I wanna lose the weight, but I don't wanna do what it takes to lose the weight. I wanna, I wanna you know, like not be on social media quite as much, but I'm not gonna take any precautions on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that that happens. We, we don't like the process. I wanna get closer to Jesus, but I don't wanna read my Bible or come to church and do anything that's gonna cause me to grow closer to Jesus. We, we just wanna be zapped. We don't love the process, but that's what it is. Being made new, sure, there's a one-time moment, there's an instant where you're made new positionally, but practically, it's a process, and it doesn't just happen overnight. So in the words of Joel Embiid from the Philadelphia 76ers, we need to trust the process. Trust the process, and hear this, it's not a yearly process. It's not, a, it's a daily process. Process, that's the problem with New Year's resolutions. We're like, I wanna, I wanna stop, you know, let's get real here for a second. I wanna stop watching porn. And then, we, and then we watch porn in February and you're like, oh, blew it. I'm gonna wait until January 1st of 2020, right? Like, or, or we, wanna, we wanna eat really well this week and we eat bad on Tuesday and we're like, eh, well, gotta wait until next Monday to get started back up again. Like, no, it's a day-to-day -day process. God's grace is new every single day for us to start over and become more of the people that God creates us to be. Maybe this should be our, our verse of the year right here, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed. How? How? Day by day. Not year by year. Just day by day. If you want to grow, if you want to be made new, let's just say, I'm going to win the day. We talked about this a couple years ago in, the New Year's, in, in our New Year's message. I just want to win the day. I want to love people today. I want to grow today. I want to honor God today. And if I mess up, good news is His grace is new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. I'm just going to start again. I'm going to win tomorrow. Win the day. Win the day. Win the day. I love the message version. It, it goes on to say this. It's the same verse. This is why we never give up. This is why we never give up. This is the problem. We give up at times because we think, oh, I just, it just needs to happen. But no, we don't give up because our spirits are renewed every single day. Every day. We need to win the day. And I thought, you know, so, and then I felt a nudge from God. So that was kind of the message summed up. It was going to be longer and there are going to be some stories in there, but that's kind of the bulk of the message of what it was going to be. But then I felt a nudge from God and saying, hey, here's, here's what we need to win each and every day. That's what I want you to talk. I want you to talk about a specific thing, something that we need to focus on every single day. And I think if we want to become more and more like Jesus, if we want to grow into the people that God has created us to be, I think this story sheds light on how that can take place. So 
I was directed to Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 22, and we're going to read through this story. Someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to inherit in, in eternal life? And if you read commentaries on this, it's not just about getting to heaven. It's like, how can I experience life and life to the full right now, but also a life that lasts forever? How can I experience life to the full forever, starting in this moment? And then Jesus goes on to say, why ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes on to say, well, I, this is great, I'm in good shape. I can experience life forever because I've obeyed all these commandments. I've done all that. The young man replied, what else must I do? And Jesus told him this, if you want to be perfect, in other words, if you want to experience the life that I offer, Go and sell all your possessions. Give the money to the poor. You'll have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. I want to read from the message version of this, just the last two verses of this, kind of a paraphrase. Um, scholar kind of paraphrased the scriptures, and he, he says this. This is what Jesus replies to this man. If, if you want to give it all you've got, if you want to go all in, go sell your possessions, give everything to the poor, all your wealth will then be in heaven, then come follow me. That was the last thing the young man expected to hear, and so he walked away. He was holding on tight to a lot of things, and he couldn't bear to let go. He couldn't bear to let go. This man was holding on tight to many things. This man had control of many things, and essentially Jesus knew this, and so Jesus went to the heart of the issue as to why he would not give his whole life to Jesus, and essentially it was because this man was holding on to these things because he loved these things more than he loved Jesus. He wouldn't let go because these things were more valuable than what Jesus had to offer him. And so hear me on this. This is not a passage of scripture that is like anti-money. It's not saying money is evil, money is bad, you need to give all that away. That's not the passage. What this is saying is, is that nothing, absolutely nothing should sit on the throne of your life other than Jesus. Absolutely nothing in your life should be more important than Jesus, the creator of the universe who died for you and rose for you. Nothing should be more important than that. And I was, I was thinking, how are, we gonna, how are we gonna have the best year ever? How are we gonna become new? How are we gonna be the people that God created us to be? And it's, how it's gonna happen is we're gonna have to win the fight of letting go. On a day-to-day -day basis, we're gonna to need to say, hey, Jesus, you're greater than everything in my life, therefore I give it all to you. If you wanna be the truest version of yourself, you are fully surrendered to God saying, you can have it all. You're better than all of it. You've given it to me in the first place, so here I am. You can have it all. How many of y'all like fast food? Raise your hand. Nice. You say Taco Bell? McDonald's, yeah. T-Bell, that's good. Burger King. Here's, here's, here's what I think. Arby's, overrated. Um, I, I think, like, I think we need all of them, personally. Um, I think they're all great, like, for a lot of different reasons. Like, like Chick-fil-A offers really good consistency and service, and you know you're going to get the same thing every time you go there. Uh, I think McDonald's has the best fries still to this day when they're done well, um, when they're done well. Um, Taco Bell is amazing for late night, like cravings. It is, it is it's the best. Um, uh, what else are we at? I, I, you guys might not like me about this one, but I think, I think Burger King has the best burger, the Whopper. Anybody? Like, no, no. Well, like, 
Like Whopper Wednesday was a big part of my life in 2018, but it's 2019, new year, new me. So I have not, I have not been there, um, but, uh, but I do love the Whopper. We could go on and on and on with why we love all these different fast food restaurants, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing the, you know, kind of talking about this conversation justice if I didn't say the best fast food item is a spicy chicken sandwich. Uh, it is, and, and the best spicy chicken sandwich, okay, you can argue with me, it, you know, it's not as consistent as Chick-fil-A, but when it's done right, it is Wendy's. Yeah. Has the best spicy chicken sandwich, all right? But while I love fast food, shh, shh, I have some pet peeves with fast food, and it kind of started when I was a kid because we'd have a big family, and my pet peeve is, is when we'd go to McDonald's and order a bunch of stuff, and they wouldn't give us everything that we ordered. Like, we'd get home, and they'd be like, Josh, your double cheeseburger isn't here. I'm like, well, can we drive back? You know, like, I want the sandwich, right? But it happens every now and then. It got to the point where we would go through the drive through and my dad would check the bag. Like he would count the items, and if there weren't enough items, we'd go back inside and say, hey, this is what we're missing. Does anybody have, you do that where you check in the bag? Okay, yeah, that's great. We're, this is so good. This is, we're bonding. We're learning a lot about each other tonight. I love this. It's so good. And uh, there was one time I was playing basketball at the Arnold Rec Center, and it was kind of late at night, and uh, gym was about to close, and I was about to go over to uh, Abby's house, who I'm married to now, but she's my girlfriend at the time, and I was about to get me some Wendy's, okay? And I was so ready for Wendy's. And so I got Abby a couple spicy chicken go wraps, which don't sleep on those either. Those are pretty good. And then I got myself a spicy chicken sandwich and like a you know, junior bacon cheeseburger and some chili and some fries and, uh, and a couple small frosties for me and Abby. And, and so, so this is what I got. And I remember I go over to her house and I'm so ready to eat it. You guys know that feeling like you're just so hungry, you got, it smells so good in the car. You were disciplined enough not, over, not to reach over and eat the fries when you're in the car, which is just great. I'm like so ready. And I open up the main item, the main, the main item. What's the main item? The spicy chicken is the main item, right? And so I open the main item and it's a home style. It's a home style. So I'm just, yeah, that's right, Alex. That's, that was my reaction. Like, are you serious? Like who eats a home style, you know? And, uh, and so I get frustrated and I remember like I was actually angry. Like I threw the sandwich down, I'm like, ugh, it's a home style. And Abby was, I remember Abby took out the phone and started videoing me and she was like laughing because I'm angry. But who's laughing now, girl? Like, yeah, you, know, you sprained your ankle, can't walk. Who's laughing now, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you, I was just joking. She knew I was gonna say that, but I was so excited to say it. Um, and, uh, and, um, and so I remember I was like so mad because I remember like thinking, this isn't what I ordered. Like this isn't what I purchased. And with that said, we're gonna read a Bible verse. Um, <laughs> First Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says this, you do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. If you believe in Jesus, you were, you were bought. We believe that your life is not your own. Jesus loved you so much that he literally died for you. And now your old life is gone and your new life is hidden in Christ. He has literally purchased you with his blood that was shed on the cross. And he didn't just purchase parts of you. Like he didn't just purchase parts of you. And I think if we're going into 2019 where there are like parts that are like, we aren't going to give you that, God. You don't have access to that. Nope. Like, like I'm not going to give you access to my social media life. I know I'm probably not honoring you with that, but I'm going to hold that to myself. I'm not going to give you this relationship that I am not honoring you in. I'm not going to give you this relationship that I shouldn't be in, period. I'm not going to give you my reputation or how I act in front of my you know, friends at school, I'm not going to give you that. Like, that's, that's mine. And I think, much like my frustration when it came to the dang sandwich, I think, I think Jesus is thinking to himself, that's not what I bought. That, that's not what I purchased. I, 
I purchased the whole thing. I want all of you. I want your whole life. And this shouldn't be like a frustrating thing. This is beautiful. God wants the good, the bad, and the ugly. He wants your whole life as you head in to 2019 to make a massive difference in the kingdom of God. If you're in middle school, he wants you to surrender your whole life to him. If you're in high school, he wants you to surrender your whole life to him. Don't wait until you graduate college. He wants all of you, every single part. You've been bought with price. And so for the rich young ruler, um, it it was money money like that was most important in his life that that was the thing where like god you don't have access to that but but what is it for you what is it for you is it your weekends again is it your reputation is it your future hopes and your dreams is it your time and give them any time what what is it for you? And I'm going to have uh, Becca, if you want to come up and start playing that piano. Um, and uh, we can kind of turn the house lights down a little bit. And I just want us to close our eyes. Take a moment of reflection uh, between you and God. I think this is that important where we can kind of focus on this. And, uh, and I want you to think. I want you to think. Close your eyes, everybody, just for the sake of concentration. What is it? What is it for you that you have not, or you will not surrender to God? Is it school, is it time? Snapchat, Instagram, it's consumed your life, isn't being used for good? Is it your sin behind closed doors that no one knows about? What are you holding on to? Is it your next step? Is it like something you know you're supposed to do, you're supposed to get baptized or confess sin or Give God your Sunday nights. Maybe you're supposed to get baptized, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And you're like, nope, this is is mine. I'm not giving you access to that. Maybe it's just your senior year. God, I can at least have one year for myself. What is it? And as everyone's eyes are closed other than mine, I'm going to keep them open. I can. Like, Raise your hand if there's something in your life right now. Nobody's looking. Raise your hand if you would say there's something in your life that you haven't given God access to. Raise your hand. A lot of hands. In fact, I would say almost everybody in the room. Everybody in the room, you can put them down. And I want us to do something before we sing our last song. And so I, I, want, I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. It's just going to be an exercise here real quick. And, uh, and again, just for privacy to where we're not distracted because we're students and that happens every now and then. It happens for me too. Um, you can close your eyes again. Close your eyes. All right. And I want you to hold your fist, okay, out with your, with your fist clenched, all right? It's where they're closed. You're holding on to whatever it is. Again, I don't know what it is. You do. God does. Maybe it's a secret sin. Maybe it's your sexuality. Maybe it's, again, a relationship. Next step, your passion. You're like, I'm not giving you my passion. I'm going to put my passion into other things. Your giftedness. You're going to use that for your own good and not for the good of others and for the glory of God, whatever it is. And if you, if you really... If you really, really, really want to start out the year where we're saying, I want to become new. I want to be the people. I want to be the person that God has created me to be. Maybe the reason that that's not happening is because of what's in your hand right now. Maybe your whole life isn't being transformed because there's a part of your life that you're holding on to so tight. And you're like, no. And God's like, okay, fine. Fine. I'm not going to force myself. You can have it. But you're just going to stay where you're at. In fact, you're probably going to go backwards. And if that's you with your fists that are clenched, I would just encourage you in this moment, if you're saying, God, I want to surrender my whole life to you, just open them. Just let go right now. Let go. If you're not ready, that's okay. 
I think there's something about a physical act of surrender saying, God, this is yours. Father, we give these things to you right now in this moment. So we're about to sing. We're grateful for the fact that you're a personal God, an intimate God that wants to change us, that wants all of us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Father, maybe it's a little easier for us to do tonight as there are hundreds of students here doing the same type thing, but probably be a little harder tomorrow morning. Father, give us the courage every single day, every single morning, even when we mess up the day before, to wake up and say, God, I, I give this to you. I, I'm yours. I'm all yours. You didn't purchase just parts of me. You purchased my whole life. Give us the courage to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we, before we sing a song, we're, we're about to sing a new song, and, uh, and it really is kind of a song of victory, but also really a song of surrender and the fact that what Jesus did for us on the cross, again, purchase, purchases all of us to the point where we should surrender our whole lives. And so there's, there's, a bri- there's the bridge that starts, and it talks about how really we're, 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 we're surrendering our whole lives to God. We're giving our whole lives to God. And do you know what the international sign of surrender is? Anybody? Hands are like this. Your, your, your hands are open. And God, I'm not holding on to anything in the more. I, I, I surrender. I give this to you. And if you feel so bold, if you're not comfortable doing so, that's okay. But if you feel so bold, I encourage you just to surrender, to give your life to God, like literally, physically in worship, saying, this is all yours. I'm all yours. I'm an open book. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll give my whole life to you. We encourage you to do that as we sing this beautiful song. Let's go to God together.
Y'all can take a seat real quick. We're going to chat just for a, uh, just for a minute, um, kind of about tonight and a couple other things. So again, next week, the edge is off for the Super Bowl, but Sunday morning is on, and we'll have the first couple rows open for you, so make sure you come and worship on Sunday mornings with us when we are not having edges. The week after, we are back uh, with our love, sex, and dating message, which is always a a lot of fun. It's different content. Ever, I'm telling you, it's fresh content every year as we're as we're really kind of preaching from different books that are written on the topic. Um, so we'd love for you to come and invite. I think that is super practical for us in middle school and high school when we feel a lot of pressures when it comes to those type of topics. And um, what else do we have? Uh, first off, I know it's it's winter right now and it's cold out, but I am just looking forward to some warmth. Does anyone else just love the warm weather? With the warm weather and the warm weather on my mind, that brings us to summer programs. Okay, varsity, squad, obturns, that all starts. Sign up start tonight. You can go online tonight and sign up for our summer programs. And if you don't know what they are, you need to find someone who's been in varsity, squad, or obturns before and just ask them, what is that? Because it is a summer that I, I'd really believe, Josh, it can change your life, it can change your walk with Jesus, and it can change how you look at church. Uh, and just bring you to a new level in your relationship with God. That's right. So sign up, start tonight. That's great. And then um, we're about to eat pizza. Yeah, we are. Exciting. Um, who's ready for pizza? We're fired up about that. That's going to be a uh, lot of fun. And we're also playing. Um, what are we? What, what are we doing? We're out playing there? spoons tonight. Come on. So, if you don't know what spoons are, first off, here's what I need: leaders in the room. A few that are maybe sitting towards the back. If you're not in the back, that's okay. Can you go out there and grab the tables that are in the community auditorium? Roll them out into the cafe and uh, go ahead and get those tables set up. We're going to need probably 15 to 20. There's a lot of them in the community auditorium. Guys, stick with me for a minute as our leaders are doing that. And if you could be so kind, leaders, on a piece of paper, just write what grade level is going to go to that table. There's going to be probably one or two for each grade. So anyways. Real quick, if real you quick. Raise your hand if you don't know how to play spoons. Okay. You don't know how to play spoons. Okay. Well, we're going to teach you. Uh, leaders, leaders, okay, in here who know how to play spoons, I want you to come up here, okay? We need, so I, we need three. I just need three people up here, three people who are leaders. Kayla knows um, how to play. There we go, Bree. You, you, you can come on up. Come on up. I saw you hop up. All right, okay? so I forgot to grab the spoons, but I grabbed pens. Okay, yeah, we got pens. So we're playing a game of spoons. With pens. So what is the goal of, like, how do you explain right, this game the, to those that know so how to play? So you don't want to be the last person to grab a spoon or you're out, okay? If you were the last person to grab one of the spoons sitting on your table, you're out. And you get to sit out and watch everybody else play. So you need to be fast. And we're gonna, our goal is to play at least three rounds of this. But at first, we're playing elimination. You don't grab a spoon, you're out for the night, and then we're going to wait. Maybe we'll get another two, a round or two in. So, what are they fast at? What are they fast at? Yeah. Grabbing the spoon. Okay, nice. Grabbing the spoon? Yep. So here's how it goes. You're going to get dealt four cards each. There's going to be groups of eight when you get out there. So each of you are going to get four cards. All right? And the goal of this game is to have four of the same cards in your hand. All right? And how you get those is by passing a card. So if you, they know how to play, what we'll do is they'll start. Bree's going to start. She'll take one from the top of the deck. And her goal right now is to get four of the same cards. If she doesn't like the card, doesn't help her hand, she passes it to the next person. If that person keeps it, because maybe that, now they have two fives, then they pass something else out of their deck to the next person. You can only have four cards in your hand at a time, right? Yep, you can't pick up five at a time. If, if she gets going faster than her, that's, that's on her. She just needs to go a little faster. She's too slow. And once one of them has five cards in their hand, they're going to sneakily but fast grab a spoon and then uh, whoever doesn't grab a spoon is out. Real quick, did you say five cards or four of the same card? Four of the same card. Okay, when you have four of the same card, you sneakily grab a spoon, okay? Oh, oh. Fake grab. Fake grab. If that happens, just keep going. You can tell it's getting close. Yeah, it's getting very close, okay? So, someone's going for four of a kind right now. This is what you're going to be doing. Sometimes these games last 20 seconds. The problem with this game is right now, the cards weren't shuffled. So, that's probably what's going on right now. That's why I it's taking a while. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just a good, it's a great round. This is a really good round. If you run out, oh, oh. All right. Bree yep. would be out. So, so once, some, once you see someone grab that spoon, anything's, ga anything's fair game. All Does right? this make you sense? Go that, you go for that spoon. All right, okay. you guys got it? 
Okay? All right, so just, that's just to give you some excitement, though, before we dismiss you, here's what you're playing for tonight, okay? We have some gift cards. Josh, just go ahead and present what these gift cards are. Each of them are 25. Okay, so the goal is Thank at you. each table, all right? So the winner of each table will advance to play the winners of the other tables that won. And so, so like the first winner, you'll have a chance between a, a $25 gift card to Dairy Queen. Okay. Not many excited about that. $25 Visa gift card, which That's is like just cash. cash. That's like cash. $25 to Nike. Yeah. Nice. Or $25 to Steak and Shake, okay? Oh. And these have been, and, and uh, actually, yeah, you have the, but we were also going to award the guy who won our ugly sweater I think that was <laughs> competition Andrew. from like three months ago. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, um, it's going to be a great time. Uh, they're out there setting up, so we'll, we'll make an announcement on when Spoons is starting. But in the meantime, go get a uh, drink of water and grab some pizza if you like. Um, All right. And have a great night. Make sure you, uh, you're going to have eight people in your group. But stay with your group. Stay with your grade level. Yeah. That's good. That was the nice. I, they're actually engaged. They were annoying.